Hello and welcome to another Franchise Hockey Manager 4 stream. My name is Adam. I am the Community Manager. With me as always, but not pictured on your screen, is FHM Producer Jeff. Say hi, Jeff. Hey, everybody. And we are back with the 2020-2021 Florida Panthers. Woo! And, well, if you... I think you, you had an extra 20 in there. 2020-2021? No, I think that was right. No, no, I guess that's exactly right. There yeah, we go. Yeah, you're, you're trying to you're trying to confuse me there, Jeff. We are back. It's September. No, that's going to be a confusing season. It is. Uh, we, uh, if you missed it, had a special stream where we played as our Florida Panthers to do the playoff run, and we um, did we even win a game? I mean, we. I wasn't there. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. This is okay. your fault. That's on you. Okay, let's. To be fair, I mean, we had a terrible thing. I streamed it out. We didn't lose a single game. Got all the way to second place in our division. Went to the playoffs, but we didn't make it out of round one. We proceeded to... Let's pull up the history here. And uh, so the 2019-2020 season, Chicago won. Uh, we lost to Tampa Bay four straight. That's right. And then Tampa Bay lost to gotcha. Toronto. And then, oddly, Carolina and Chicago were in the finals, where Chicago won 4-1. We did really well, though. Looking at the standings here, we can look at uh, conference. Yeah, I mean, we kind of turned the corner in that last part of the season. and uh... Yeah, we finished fourth overall in the Eastern D Conference. So we have hope. So big expectations for this year. Big expectations. So... Uh, as you may remember, part of the reason why I skipped ahead was because we didn't have a lot of draft picks. In fact, we had traded away our first or second or third or fourth, and we had a fifth, a couple sixths, and a seventh. Uh, so what did we do with those draft picks? Looking at our unsigned draft picks, you can see in the year 2020, we had a six-round pick named Cedric Hodden's Child, who is a Swiss guy playing uh, in Tier 2 Swiss League. He's having a pretty good... Uh, He's half star talent, two and a half star potential. Uh, then we drafted Alex Kupka, half star guy, two and a half star potential. Again, sixth round, seventh round pick was Michael Marjnik, who was a two and a half star guy playing with. Uh... Oh man, SMB. I'm just drawing a complete bank. Uh... St. John which I can't remember the name of their team. St. Sea Dogs. The Sea Dogs. He's playing with the Sea Dogs. In his first season, he yeah. had 68 games, had 37 points. Not great, but you know, he's a seventh round pick. Hopefully he grows into something. We also added with our fifth round pick was Nikita Strakov, a Ukrainian guy who's playing in Britain this year. So that should be interesting. Half star guy, two star talent. Again, not expecting much, but this wasn't a great draft, which is why we traded away so many guys. Further on to July 1st, what did we do? Well, we made a couple of trades and signed a couple of guys. So who did we sign? Well, we signed our first free agent and we signed Sammy Vatnin to come in and help shore up our defense. We also added free agent from the Western League, Brett Kemp who will look in a minute when we uh, look at our roster screen. And we, I realized we actually had a lot of guys under contract, so I traded away, let's see, one, two, three, four guys and the rights to somebody else for a second and a third round pick from the Winnipeg Jets for this next year. Our second round pick this next year, our third round pick another year. Not really sure. We also put Calvin DeHaan uh, and traded him away in September for a third round pick, basically to clear out some more room. I noticed you didn't uh, sign a goalie. You were thinking about that, but uh, apparently it didn't go well looking you, for a free agent. Uh, the problem was we actually had a lot of money tied up with our contracts, and the number one goalie on the free agent market was Braden Holpe. And I don't remember where Holpe signed, but he signed for a huge chunk of money. And he wanted a huge chunk of money. He signed with Colorado, actually. So what did he sign for? 9.4 million. 
and I just, three years. Yeah, okay, oh, yes. so that's he. He just it was so much money we just couldn't afford it. He was going to tie up. Yeah, well, nice money. bonus for us at least. It gets him out of the conference. So. Absolutely. A couple of games we get against Washington this year will be a little easier. Looks like they've got a couple of kids in goal. Yeah, so they have Mackenzie Blackwood and Ilya Samsonov, who actually was one of the goalies uh, we could have picked up. But the good news with our goaltending, at least, is Thatcher Demko has moved up to two stars. After sitting at one and a half stars for most of the year, he's actually moved up. Uh, Jake Bean also took yeah. a little increase up to two stars. Uh, we'll just look at our training camp development report here in one minute. But uh, Brett Kemp, who we added as a free agent, he was not drafted. He turns out to be a two and a half star talent, two and a half star potential. Uh, played with Edmonton Oil Kings in the WHL, had 71 games played and had 110 points. So, yep. so, so he could theoretically he could still go back to Edmonton. He was uh, he's a, he's overage this year, so yeah. If you want the WHL, <laughs> but I think he might actually have a place on our fourth line here. Uh, we still, we I put Vincent Trocheck up on the trade block. Honestly, I'd kind of like to move his four point seven five million dollar contract out the door. Um, I mean, he put, only put yeah, up twenty eight points kinda, last year. And looks like he was hurt for a little while, but he's sort of underperformed all the way through it. And yeah, I mean, he's not terrible. We've got he's tip at neighborly, so. so yeah, we yeah, also have yeah. uh, Philip Kershev. We currently have on our roster as well Alex Turcott, who was our first round pick the year before. He's one and a half star talent guy. Honestly, he will probably end up back in the OHL unless he does something amazing here. But as you can see, we have Yeah, a, back to Saginaw's one and a half stars. Yeah, we have a bunch of guys away at international tournament, so we're just gonna have to have our roster kind of crisp scramble together here. Looking yeah, you're going to have to call up a few guys when you get to... Oh, you are on I, there. you yeah. got a game today, actually. I actually did call up a bunch of guys before because I realized that. Uh, so looking at our training camp development report, nobody went down. Dolan went up. He's at three stars. Uh, just quickly kind of flipping through everybody. Um, you can see some guys have started to jump, which is great. Uh, Philip Kershev is one of those guys, you know, he's up to two and a half star talent, three star potential. Could push for a spot this year. Uh, Pierre Olivier, Olivier Joseph also might start pushing at one and a half stars, but probably needs a little bit more seasoning. Yeah, although he did play a little bit before you last year. Yes, well, we had to play him. We had some injuries. Yeah. But now that Jake Beans is out for a while, two stars is probably a good thing. I just got to check one thing manager options. Okay, training us to our system. Awesome. Okay, so we got some news to start camp. Sammy Vatnin, who isn't even with our team right now, has shown up out of shape. Do we criticize him publicly? Do we criticize him internally? Or do we ignore it, Jeff? What do you think? Uh, well, we just sign him. Let that go. We're going to ignore the incident. All right, ignore the incident. So he's not... He can play himself into shape. He's, he's actually going to be playing for Finland in the uh, World Cup. So hopefully he comes back and ready to play. Yeah. So three-star guy just adds a little bit more polish to our defense. Hopefully keeps playing a little bit better. Um, that's kind of what's happened so far. Again, we just came right up to the start of the trade deadline. Oh, there is one more thing, which I'll talk about after this game. And we win our first game. Connor Hellbuck gets hot. And we win 5-2. Awesome. So, Bukestad, Jake Bean scored. Jake Bean scored again. Two goals by Jake Bean. Nick Haig scores twice. Marchation chips in. Two assists. Love it. Great, solid win for us. So, Jeff, I did one other thing that's kind of important for us. For the first time ever on a stream we have taken over a national junior team we are the general manager of the under 20 team finland and so what does that mean didn't we know i think we actually didn't we have a national junior i think we played as no we've been it, slovakia uh, Latvia, 20 once i think we did them no i don't think so 
I, th I think that was a junior team. Might have been. I'm not sure. But so we'll, we'll get to play in the World Junior Championship this year. Yes, with a top-ranked team, mind you, as well. Gudu's in the in the yep. chat spouting out that uh, we should be winning the cup this year. But, you know, he's watched most of the streams. Gudu, do you remember if we've actually played as an under-20 team? Because I don't think we have. And so some news have happened. Da, da, da. Salary cap reminder, we need to be below 75 million, which we are. And I got to give some guys some new numbers. It's going to be 86. Uh, 22. How is it that you've only got three guys with a number on 10? I don't know. <coughs> what do you want from me? Uh, nobody wants single digit numbers anymore? Nope. Everybody wants something different. All right, so nothing big here. Hopefully nobody's hurt. Let's take a quick look. No. Oh, you know, maybe Vatnin. It says he's unfit. Is he not at international? Uh, no, that's just he was on. He, you can only have one thing in that column at a time. So the unfit is overriding the international. He is. No, he's not at international. Oh yeah, there he is. Never mind. My bad. Yeah, he is. I, I miss yep. seeing it. I miss seeing it. Okay. Because I'm, I'm still looking at the save from before you started yeah, yeah, advancing, yeah. and uh, it's yeah, he's international in that. So again, nothing too exciting, but we have some promise and you never know we might be able to turn this kind of around we'll also be watching the waiver wire very closely in case somebody of interest pops up in the middle of it. Yeah. Demco speaking of which I can one thing I was going to mention uh, one thing we've added in the uh, new update haven't added a, added a lot of new features but one thing is uh, something that will uh, interrupt the game and uh, let you know if you see a player on waivers above a certain level you can set it to uh, one star two star three star four star whatever and if somebody pop, somebody goes on waivers in your league that's above that level, you'll get a notification and the game will stop uh, simming forward. So you can try to sign or try to claim them if you want. So is that in this current build that I am on? I, I am on a test build, obviously. Uh, yeah, if this is the current test build, uh, yes, it is. Uh, it's off by default if you look on manager options. So if we go to manager, manager options... I'm not seeing it here, so or where, where should I be looking here? Bottom right exit auto play, third one from the bottom. Oh yes, when a player is available on waivers. No half star options though, I see. Not just uh, decimal ones. All right, we'll look here in case someone's at two stars because we do still need mm -hmm. kind of some of those middle guys. Game versus Montreal here. Uh, Demko won our last game. We'll put uh, Hellebuck back in, send it out, and he loses. We lose 6 1. We only get 12 shots on net. That's embarrassing. Yeah, it's a preseason. I don't like getting beat that bad, though. What I should actually do is uh, check to make sure my strategies are still. PWOG in the chat says Toledo Wall. Walleye, ECHL, part of game? Yep, the uh, ECHL is playable. Yeah. All right, uh, just going to check my strategies here because we haven't, we've been playing the Terrace Off system, which we are still five star suited for. And got a couple other ones, but no, nothing big change. I mean, we could go to the brick system, which is four, but I think we're probably still good sitting. No, I wouldn't bother season. changing. I don't think there's any. I mean, considering how you finished last season, I think it makes more sense to stick with what you were playing then. Yeah. Or at least not the last part of the regular season. Yeah, well, you can see we're starting to improve in some other areas, so that means our team's changing a little bit as we continue to move here. Yeah. I'm just going to keep advancing. Uh, Good Akira says, speaking of jersey numbers, I only recently found out about Lou Lemerel not letting players have numbers above 40 or something, and goalies could only wear certain numbers. Lou was a stickler for some of those rules. That's for sure. Uh... 
And we lose again, 6-3. There's some people who believe, you know, kind of your lower numbers are more important and what should be first taken, but really to me it's kind of weird when you see a player with a goalie number two. Like, uh, I'm still getting used to guys wearing like number 29 who are out skating on the ice. Like Patrick Lane, for instance. But uh, to each their own. Yeah. Oh, something you should keep an eye on here. Uh, World Cup is going on, so you may want to... I think it was had already started by the time you had uh, started this, so you may want to see how everybody's doing there. All right, so we're going to go to International. We're on World Cup. Click Standings, and we can see... Oh, wow. Canada actually performed terribly and was 1-2 and two in the tournament. The United States finished 3-0 and oh and is actually playing Europe in the finals. Wow. North America just kicking it. Yeah, this is the same format as the uh, World Cup uh, a couple of years ago, so it'll have the North American and the Europe teams. The North American team being the uh, under... Uh, was it under 23? Uh, yes. Yeah. Which means we have some guys back, so I can easily put... I would take Huberdeau out. Uh, I'm going to send Nando Eggenberger back down. He's not ready to play quite yet anyways. Oh, and Tippett should come in. We're going to send Alex Turcotte down at this point, I think. Let him keep growing in the OHL. <coughs> Dress him. Okay, Vatnin should be done as well, so let's put him in for... Replace with Vatnin. Get him starting to work to get his defensive game going. Place with Ekblad. Gonna send Bodine back down as well. And John Carlson is still away right now, so don't need to worry about him. Trocek's still away. Barkov is back though, so who else is coming out of the lineup? Our forward's actually looking pretty strong. You know, Borkstrom didn't really do anything for us, so let's replace him with Barkov. Yeah. And just readjust everything. All right. Brian Label says, if you're ever in Buffalo, I have season tickets to the Sabres. You can have them. Are you trying to give them away? <laughs> I'll take them off that. I haven't been in Buffalo in, uh, I think it's uh, close to 20. You know, it's a good hockey town when you, I, first thing I do is take the cab from the airport and I get into a discussion with the uh, <laughs> driver about Brad May. Okay, you, you cut out a little bit on years, but Brad May tells me how long I was saying uh, last, yeah. Yeah, last time I was in Buffalo, the first thing I, you know, I get in the get in the cab from the airport to the hotel, and driver here's from my, here's I'm from uh, British Columbia, so he immediately start talking about Brad May. I think he had just been traded from, uh, or the Canucks had just picked him up from wherever he was at between Buffalo and Vancouver. All right, interesting. Okay. Um... And continue to send. We're just about into October now. We're still not getting wins, and Hellebuck's staying cold, which is not a good sign for Hellebuck, because Hellebuck is at his best yeah, when he is lit on fire. And I think, if I remember right, we had that problem uh, the beginning of last year, too. Yes, I believe Quite so. a while for him to pick up, and it sounds like when you, when you had that little run at the end of the season, he must have heated up there and 
He was. I finally him, got going, but just it took a while. Every single game, and he finally just took game. off. Brian Label in the chat says, Mayday. Yeah, I still remember that one fight uh, when he was not, not really so much a fight, but when he grabbed the guy over top of the boards and just started pumbling him senseless. By the way, you got a lot of guys coming up on uh, one year. Uh, I know. That's another thing we have to look at. Here. Yeah. And some Carlson and Hellebuck being the big ones. Hellebuck is going to cost you a lot more money this time, I think. Although if he's playing terrible, why keep him? So we have a development report. Uh, here. And, okay, so Europe defeats the United States. 4-2. to two. And Europe wins the World Cup then. Oh, no, wait. Wow. Or is that a multi-game thing? I can't remember. Uh, Wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was a three-game series, maybe. Okay, so here's the most awesome thing ever. Uh, Central Scouting 2021 draft list published. And, you know, whatever. We have United States Hockey League right-handed defenseman. Jeff, I want you to say his name. No, I gotta look. Well, I'm a couple of a uh, couple of seconds behind you in my game, so I gotta well, look it up. Fine. on you the, should still uh, know this name. It's so it's so amazing. Entry draft page. I got. No, I gotta get. I gotta get it right. It's Abraham O'Lonergan. Abraham O'Lonergan of the United States National Team Development Program. One star talent, four and a half star potential. What a sweet name. <laughs> Six foot one hundred seventy seven pounds. <coughs> yep. Sounds like he might be a star. So yeah. Uh, so do well, defensive defenseman. Uh, he's don't know if he's going to be a real dominant guy, but it's definitely an interesting guy to pick up. Okay, no, it looks like actually the tournament's over. Uh, so Chochek's back. Huberto's still hurt. Okay, so who are we dropping out of here? marchation has been scoring. I kind of don't want to take him out. Yeah. Um. Let's just take a look at our stat summary and we'll go to preseason. So we can see Eberle's got seven points in six games. Marchation's got six or five, five points in six games. Let's go down to the bottom. You don't necessarily have to take a winger out. You've got, uh, you've only got three left wings, I think. Yeah. I'm just trying to see who's, the most likely guy to come out. Yeah, Mershon's done 12. Nick Suzuki doing. Nick Suzuki's got five points in six games. Everybody's kind of putting yeah. up points. Gabe Vildari's actually been the, one of the lowest guys, but I don't exactly want to get rid of a 21-year-old. Yeah, Vilardi's kind of disappointed. Hey, uh, he'd be one of their... You know what? Jason like, uh, Dixon's... He was a high like first-round pick, and now... Dixon? Um, yeah, two and a half stars. He's not going to get any better. He, he actually played the whole season for you last year. That's one of your... Oh, you got a few guys who are reasonably good physically, so that shouldn't be shouldn't hurt you. Yeah, so we'll uh, bring Trocek back in on that. Huberdeau and Goudreau still got to get healthy. Um, I'm going to send Borkstrom down right now because he's not going to make this team. A uh, question from Brian in the chat. Uh, the NHL teams always have three scouts, but as a human player, you can get more. Is that giving you an unfair advantage? Uh, nope. Uh, the scouting works differently for the AI run teams as it does for the human teams. So you being able to sign extra scouts uh, doesn't give you any particular advantage. Uh, it's just that the way that uh, scouting works for a human team would be really impractic impractical to do for every single team in the game. So it's simplified a little bit for the AI teams. And they don't need as many scouts to be effective. Okay, so here's part of the issue right now. Okay, so we're sitting at, what was that salary cap reminder? How much? <coughs> Gotta kind of go back and look. What's the salary cap at? I don't even remember anymore. Right there it is. Uh, 75 million. So we just went under right now. Yep. But we, st we still have one guy over. So yep. That's the kind well, of... you will save a little bit if you wind up moving Trocek at one point. You could try shopping him if you want to. 
Okay, I will try. He's been on the trade block. Get that taken care of right away. And the problem is we kind of don't really want any contract back. Jacob De La Rosa. No, I don't want him. Brandon Carlo. Two-star defenseman with us. Two-star talent. No, don't really want him either. Anthony Lewis. Uh, I guess I got offered from by the Kings in this uh, in my game. <laughs> by the Jeff Carter. No, no. Zetterberg. Oh, Mr. Zetter Z. <laughs> He's still around? Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, apparently it, was, it looked like he was right to LA at the end of last season. Oh. Connor Murphy is on the trade block, but again, don't want the contract. Colin Wilson, don't want the contract. Mike Amadeo. That's interesting. Oops, skipped ahead. Jaden Schwartz has been offered. Have a look at the. Did you check the St. Louis one yet? Uh, I got. I got Jaden. They offered Schwartz me. Uh, oh, okay, well, that's Colin actually pretty good too. They got. They offered me Jake Gardner. Okay, hold on. Okay, let's go back here. So LA is offering Mike Amadeo and a seventh round pick. Okay, interesting. Pittsburgh is offering Ian Barbashev. No, we don't want that. Okay, what 22. kind of contract is Schwartz on? Yeah, I'm just like Taylor Radish. That wouldn't be terrible, but again, kind of guy who wants to play, and I don't know that we need that. Uh, reject that. Okay, so Mike Amadeo is on a minimum contract of 650000 Not bad. Schwartz is on a contract for four million. Being paid four million. Cap it of five point three million for one year. Yeah, that doesn't help us at all. It actually makes things worse. Yeah, so we're gonna reject But that. Amadio, uh he's cheap. Uh well okay, Ottawa's offering Colin White. Who's only nine hundred thirty thousand? That's not terrible. Also, only two and a half stars. Although he's got a little bit of potential left, and he's uh, he's on the last year of his uh, entry level deal, though, isn't he? White. Uh, yeah, Tampa Bay is offering Taylor Radish. Which I wouldn't mind. We could send him down to the minors. Wouldn't be happy about it, but. Nashville. Um, yeah, fair. Nashville that. doesn't give us any cap room, but gives us a guy who actually scores. Victor Arvidsson. Cumbers offers Richard Panic, who we don't want. Kirill Cap bears off. Reject that as well. Shea Theodore, rejecting that. And Houston offers Michael Furland in a seventh round pick. Sorry, Houston won't do that. It's got to be one of these four moves. So we could get 60 point man Victor Arvinson for roughly the same distance contract. Taylor Radish, two and a half star, two and a half star potential. Put up 42 points. Ottawa Senators offer Colin White. I think we're going to reject that at this point. So, Ottawa's out. Yeah. And LA offers Mike Amadeo. 24-year-old. So, basically, you can take Arvidsson, who's going to be pretty good right now, or Amadeo, who's not quite as good, but a lot cheaper. Or we take Taylor Radish. Who's... Cheaper is going to need a new contract at the end of the show and isn't as good. He's the same, same as Amadeo. Amadeo's never going to get as good. I didn't... How much is Arvidsson making again? Arvidsson was making Arvidsson. roughly the same. Uh, four point two. Check the cap. It just to make sure it's not going to go. It's not. Uh, yeah, 4.25. Not for something other than the next color. four years. Oh, okay. I don't know. What do you think? Um, 
Beauty Creative mm-hmm. says, what does Beepstad yeah. actually do for the team? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I don't, I don't know. I'm really torn on this. Hmm. My gut's kind of saying Taylor Radish. I mean, He's the youngest it... guy. Yeah, you could try it. And we know you can score a bit, so... Uh... Uh, but uh, regardless, you're going to free up that uh, some salary at the end of the season. You could go. You can probably replace that three million that you're not going to be spending if you don't take Arvidsson with a free agent. Yeah, so it's rejected. By the way, speaking of free agents, I I checked the upcoming free agents for the end of the season, and you you probably really do want to sign Hellebuck. Yeah, is the only other goalie who's they worth anything at all that's going to be a free agent at the end of the year is Tukarask. Okay which we don't want anyways. So that frees us up some room um, so we can dress him and put him into the lineup immediately. We're going to... we still got two more guys. So is Brett Kemp actually going to end up going down to the minors? He might. Or Bukestad. We could try and move him too, I guess. Let me put up 24 points. Uh... Shot player. Might be better to. Well, I don't know. Detroit offers 22 year old Giovanni Smith. Reject. Arnaud Dur- Durando? That's. No, reject. Getting offers for ECHL guys not looking good. Reject. Julius Bergman. Reject. Okay, those were all terrible, but I'm just going to put him on the trade block anyways. And see if he gets something eventually. Unlikely, but could happen. Alright, so we're going to roll with this team as it is. Okay, no, wait. Uh, oh, no, we did that. We got one, two, three, six. I uh, got Pierre Elliott Joseph as our th- seventh defenseman right now. Okay, before we go any further, let's look at upcoming free agents. So, Connor Hellebuck, you're telling me I should resign. He wants, okay, $5 million for three years. $5 million per year. Um, you can probably get him down a little bit from that. That's not too bad. He didn't go completely crazy with the offer, at least. I'm going to offer him 4.5. See what he says. He wants 4.97. We'll go up to 4.7. Offered it twice, and he says that's a reasonable offer. So, all right. Um, who else do we want to sign immediately? Nick Suzuki, we want to resign. He wants 3.26 million. That's too much. I think, right? Uh, tough to say. Maybe you're going to come back in the middle of the season, see how he's doing. If he has a breakout year this year, it might be worth it. Okay, Marchation wants just above his minimum, minimum qualifying offer, so I will sign that. Hoping he kind of breaks out the same way he did in our Vegas game. Uh, Taylor Radish, who we just brought in, what does he want on his new contract? He wants three point nine million for two years. Nope, not offering him that. Gabe Vildari, what does he want? Three point one four one million. Nope, not offering him that either. Oh, I see why you weren't getting good offers for Bugstad. With uh, he's a free agent at the end of the year, UFA, and he's probably going to want some stupid amount. Well, we'll watch it. Maybe we can package him for our first round pick this year. Because uh, no. Nah, uh, just, You're going to have to put a lot else in the package. <laughs> well, let's look what we have, though. We have two second-round picks, uh, Not true. three third-round picks, a fourth-round pick, two fifth rounds, uh, three sixth rounds, and two seventh rounds. So we have some picks we can use to move. Why is he even on the team with 4.1? 
Bukestad, he must be talking about. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Okay, who was... Should we check Houston? What if we made an offer to Houston? They're going to be bad still. I don't know. Well, the roster looks reasonably deep. They've got a lot of well, two and a half, three star guys mostly. Who are we trying to give up again? Remind me. Oh, uh, uh, you extend? Yes. Houston GM Joe Sackick says we can't afford this much salary on the payroll. Okay, well, not going to be Houston then. Uh, who's got a small payroll? San Jose doesn't have a very big one. Oh, there's a small one. Columbus doesn't have a very big one. Okay, Columbus is going to be the call then. So let's see if we can... Uh, Mr. Bukestad... We want their first round pick. Um, who's somebody else we don't really care about? Maybe it's time to move on from... Oh, who's the guy we just sent down? Uh, Borkstrom, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think they will probably accept this offer. Well, let's throw in a... Six round pick. Just to be sure and see if we can grab that first rounder then. Offer the trade. Game versus Vegas here. Hello bucks and net. Whoops. What did I do? Forgot to redo the lines. And alright, there we go. Sim it out and we lose again. Two to one. Man, we cannot catch a break. Question in the chat for you. Hey Adam, I'm sorry. I hate to be a bother, but earlier this week I sent you a PM on Discord. Have you had a chance to look on at it? Not quite yet. I, I know what you're talking about. I I've, I've been busy with a few other personal things. I'll get to you in time. Sorry, it's just been a fairly hectic past few days. And let's see, Connor Hallibuck has signed and re upped. For that 4.7 million so that's good we have some guys who are gonna have to clear waivers nobody who I'm really that worried about though I mean if we lose somebody we lose somebody but that's not really a... yeah Taylor Radish wants number 17 he can have it I guess we still have yeah Johnny Goudreau still gotta come in That's fine, Exynolus. I've I've seen it. I've just uh, said lots of things coming in right now. It's a busy time of year for some weird reason. And so we can see that everyone is fascinated with all the guys we we've waved. <laughs> oh my. So we'll take a quick look here uh, and see if there's anyone of interest. And the top guys, let's see. Oh, two Tebu Taravainen is on waivers, but he has been awful. 16 points last year, 18 points the year before. That is. Yeah, it might be worth a gamble. What's his rating at right now? Tuna. Oh, he's badly injured a lot of the time. That's maybe why. He's he is. He's got 81 games the last each of the last two years. Yeah. Well, look at the image that comes up when you see him. 
Yeah, I'm just waiting. It's a couple of steps behind. I know, I know. There we go. Uh, oh, vulnerable. He's not. That ne doesn't necessarily mean he's super. He's going to have a ton of injuries. I mean, look, he's only missed two games in the last three years. So. I mean, if we want to grab somebody as as our elite defenseman, we grab Sebastian Ajo. Which would be a bad guy to have as our seventh defenseman. Thoughts? Which guy you cut out when you said it? Sebastian Ajo. Uh, two stars. Haven't we got anybody better than well? The guys who are, I want them to keep. Yeah, going. we are a little. We we are, we are a little thin on defense. Uh, He's got a little bit of room to improve, maybe just to sort by potential, see if there's anybody who's going to be a little bit better than him, but that might be an option. Not really. I think he's the pick. Yep, go for it. Sebastian Ajo will grab off waivers. If we can get him. Somebody else hasn't put a claim on, on him. And that'll just let us send uh, Joseph back down, which I'm actually going to do as well. Give us a little more room. Okay, Goudreau's back healthy. And Huberdeau. So we still got to send somebody else down. Attention, interesting player on waiver. So, maybe need to get a grammar fix on there, Jeff. Yeah, that's... <laughs> when you've got Germans writing the message, sometimes you get that, I'll let them know. <laughs> halt, interesting player on waiver. Hmm. I like it. No, it's nice to get the, the alert letting you know that's in case you didn't see it. Yeah. Uh, Brown Label in the chat says, question, if a player or a team is doing poorly, what are some things you might want to do? Does scratching a player for a gamer to help, or should you change the lines, etc.? Just trying to get ideas. Um, um either one of those try, uh, to try and let them play through stuff like that, just, uh, so they can keep building uh, teamwork uh, skills and I'm not disrupting the roster too much. Uh, line juggling around may not be a bad idea, though. Or uh, having a look at your upcoming opponents, seeing if there's anything you can exploit, if there's a particular player you've been sitting that uh, might be better to have in the lineup against them. NHL season preview. Guess who the early Stanley Cup favorite is? It's us! Not us? No, that's us. We are the early Stanley Cup favorite. What do you know? And Columbus. With Austin Matthews, who I should remind everybody that you cheated to get, but go ahead. <laughs> ah, uh, Columbus has accepted our trade offer, so we're going to make that and lose Nick Bustead and Henrik Borkstrom. And a sixth round pick to gain a first round pick, which seems like a good deal to me. Yep. And so. We're short one guy here, which means Johnny Gaudreau's back in the lineup. Huberdeau's almost ready to go, but so who's coming out then? That's the question. I guess we're sending Brett Kemp down. I mean, that's the most logical thing to do. Yeah, I think so. It's not going to hurt him to go to Springfield for a while. Yeah, and he'll be an early call-up if he, as long as he kind of yeah. Himself down May there. squeeze an extra half star out of him. Yeah, uh, Phil Kershev has been playing well, so he'll uh, have a chance to continue to succeed. So we have some new lines here by the looks of it. So we got Austin Matthews playing left wing with Barkov and Tippett. Gaudreau, Suzuki, Huberdo, Kershev, Vildari, Eberly, Radish, Borkstrand, Marchation. Yeah, it kind of makes sense to me. That gets Barkov, keeps Barkov in the first line. Yeah, I, I don't mind that. Uh, gives us some nice balance up and down the lines, too. Yep, you know, get all, you know, have all the scoring on one line. Uh, Jake Bean has made the team. 
playing with Ekblad on pairing one, Rasmus Dalton and John Carlson as pairing two, and Will Butcher and Sammy Vatnin as pairing three. Which again, I also kind of like. It just spreads some wealth all the way down and across. Yeah, and Dalian should get a, I think, hopefully have a breakout year this year. Fingers crossed, here's hoping. Yep. And Jonathan Hebert is healthy, so perfect time to get him back in the lineup. Sebastian Ajo, we only had a B scouting on him, but our scouting is saying he is, in fact, two stars and two and a, two and a half star talents. So, again, we have we signed a couple guys to try and keep just that little balance in between, but uh, I think letting Pierre uh, Elia Joseph continue to play down makes sense. And a bunch more guys just ended up on waivers. Uh, nobody of really big interest to us. Other than former Florida Panther, Mark Mathot has ended up, up on waivers. Yeah. Don't, uh, he's pretty much over the hill at this point, isn't he? Uh, he's two stars, roughly. Yeah, Maybe well, one and a half. 35 years Might have wanted him a week ago. Not really now. And uh, so we're kicking off the season versus the Vancouver Canucks. Jeff, you cannot cheer for the Canucks. They've already lost one game this season. They're going to lose two. <laughs> and so, actually, just before, I remember to check the tactics of uh, our regular stuff, but I checked the tactics of our power play. We're still looking good with the office, though, and our penalty kill. We're playing diamond, and we're still good with the diamond. So that's important play this game versus Vancouver sim it out and we win six to one take that Vancouver Ouch. okay so I guess picking up where we left off the end of the regular season last year that's kind of good well let's see how we started off so Brock Be Be Besser scores to take a one nothing lead by Vancouver 30 seconds into the game but then Goudreau scored on the power play Barkov scores Austin Matthew scores on the power play nice Tippett scored, Marchation scored, awesome. Good to see Marchation getting on the board right away. And Borkstrand scores. Great. 6 1 win. Love it. And oh no, John Carlson already got hurt. He's listed as day to day. Man, Carlson, what are you doing? Oh, that reminds me as well. We need to name it an assistant captain. Because we lo we traded away Trocheck, so we want to go to right. mental ratings, and we want to look at leadership. Uh, Ekblad is our captain. Uh, Jason Dickinson is actually the highest guy, but we're not adding him since he's not playing. The obvious answer here, I guess, is Austin Matthews should be an assistant captain. Yeah, he doesn't doesn't have a letter yet, so I and mean, he's he's actually got a high determination rating. Not that's important in the captain too, so. I definitely say Matthews. Yep. Yeah, okay. And I ex picked the right assistant, so that's good. <laughs> and so Austin Matthews takes over as our second assistant. And we will continue. Good to start off. One nothing win. Okay, game versus Edmonton. We're going to switch and put Demko in net. Let's just take a look to see what uh, Edmonton's roster look like. Reinhardt, McDavid, Dreisaitl on one line. Yamimoto, Nugent Hopkins, and Pugliarvi on line two. Timo Meyer, Oscar Lindbergh, and Hollander, line three. Safin, Benson, and Greg Gregor on line four. Interestingly, they've added Mark Stahl on defense. And they have Michael Neuwirth in goal. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, a little shaky defensively maybe, but uh, a lot of scoring there. Good news is we beat them up too. 5-1 win. Matthew scores. Hubert scores. Oh. Goudreau scores. 
Eberly scores. Vildari scores. We're getting goals from everybody. And Sebastian Ajo steps in the game and immediately becomes the first star with three assists. It's actually kind of impressive because our first game was actually in Vancouver and this one was in Miami. So we won the game, flew across the continent and won another game the next night. Darn straight. Also, that's terrible scheduling by the NHL, but at the same time, it wouldn't surprise me at all. <laughs> uh, we do have a bit of a road trip now. False cue in the chat says, who's playing? Uh, well, we are the Florida Panthers in 2020. Philip Dandano's on waivers, two and a half star guy, but probably wants way too much money, so not worrying about that. And we will continue. I mean, all the guys we have recouped, hopefully, you know, can stay healthy like Austin Matthews, which was one of the big reasons why we actually went on that huge run last year was he got healthy and then came back and basically... Scoring. Yeah, we were missing him for a while. I forgot about that. Yeah. So hopefully he can kind of turn it around. Uh, game versus Montreal. We'll leave uh, Connor Hellbuck in net. Playing against Alex Stalock. And we win again. 5-3 victory. All right. Kyle Turris is playing for Montreal now, and they take a 1-0 lead, but then Owen Tippett, Sammy Vatman score. They take retake the lead 3-2. Victor Meat, Riley Sheehan, but then Austin Matthews scores to tie it up. Barkov grabs two goals in the third period for the win. All right. Good job, guys. Sebastian Ajo is going to be tough to get out of the lineup if he keeps playing. Yeah, kind of a surprise. False Q says, I mean, who are you? Nicknames. Well, my voice is Adam. I'm the community manager of Franchise Hockey. The other guy in the chat who you might hear occasionally is FHM producer Jeff. Occasionally. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not speaking a huge amount. Uh, my nickname... Well, how about you play? You, no. When we go back to next week, when, I, when it's my game, then I'm doing the talking. <laughs> yes, but you're also pictured on the screen, so... Ah, ah true. Uh, so we're sitting at 3-0 with six points through a few games. We'll keep simming this through. Chicago, Tampa Bay. Uh, okay, let's just keep running with Hellebuck, see if we can get him hot, because that's really what we need. Another 5-2 win. Oh, right. Our team is kicking some butt. Power play goal. Power play goal. And we're getting goals from everywhere. I mean, Matthew scores. Ekblad scores. Ekblad scores. Will Butcher scores. Driving shots from the point. Yeah, so maybe this is a year. Yeah, who knows? Lucas Backman is getting better. Awesome. Tampa Bay game. We will put... Should Okay, do we run with Hellebuck or do we put Demko in? Uh, you got to give Hellebuck a rest at some point, so probably wouldn't hurt to switch Demko in for a game. Nope, not going to do it. You said at some point, not this game. And we win. Okay. Hellebuck makes 40 saves in a 2-1 victory, but still doesn't get hot. What are you doing, man? Kershev gets his first goal of the year. Butcher scores to take the 2-1 win. No one worth game he's not getting much of a chance to get on paul skew in the in the chat asks well you just actually missed our strategies we are currently playing uh the terrors off system and the two three system which is what our team has been best fit at for the past uh year or two we're not always gonna put up a lot of shots on net but we do score goals which is the most important thing and halfway yeah, through so far. halfway through October, we're sitting at five and zero, oh, which is crazy. Because I mean, who saw that coming? No, and, other than with our finish at the end of the year, I don't know about the getting swept by Tampa part, but uh... well, our goalie's cold too, and we're still getting wins. 
Yeah, no, I think we kind of turned the corner uh, right around the time uh, Matthews came back from injury last year. Yeah. But, I mean, right now, I mean, our go- goalie's just... He's got to get hot. He needs to be on fire. On fire. John Carlson's getting close to coming back, but you know what? Sebastian Ajo's playing so good, it's kind of tough to take him out. Game versus Boston, sim it out, and Steve Mason actually beats us. We lose 5-4 to four in overtime. Oh, so much for the winning streak. Well, still on a point streak, though. We were down 3-0, yeah. and then Tippett scores to make it 3-1. Nice. They make it 4-1 to start the second period. Butcher scores, Matthew scores, Suzuki scores to tie it up. And we actually lost in the shootout because Goudreau, Marchation, and Matthews couldn't get a goal. Overall, not a terrible game, actually, then. If we were down that much and came back. Yeah, stole a point, basically. Yeah. Which means I haven't really been paying attention, but I'm assuming we are in first place, and we are. John Carlson is back soon. Excellent. Just what you like to hear. From Le Capitaine. I mean, Assistant Capitaine. And some guys have got hurt. Game versus Arizona. Ella Buck's still going to play. Sim out, and we lose. 3-0. Martin Jones ended up as it ended up in Arizona and defeats us. We cannot get a goal by. We put up 32 shots on net and could not beat him. So now we're getting other people's goalie shot. Apparently. Sebastian Ajo improves on right defense. Lance Bohm is on waivers, but he does not look worthwhile at all to pick up. So Sebastian Ajo is going to come out of the lineup for now. And we're going to put Mr. Carlson back in. I guess we could put Ajo in for Will Butcher, too. Butcher's got five points. Ajo has four. Yeah, and I think Butcher's probably a little on the higher side of two stars and Ajo on. Well, I mean, all he could looks like he's going to pass him eventually. I don't know. Let's go, maybe go back and forth between the two. Well, see go. I'm sure we'll find some injuries. That's why we needed yeah. another good seventh defenseman. And a two-star yeah. guy is a good defenseman. It, he might not be an all-star, but he's still going to be a good defenseman. Yeah, he's a he's a capable defenseman. More than capable. Columbus picks Lucas Walmark off of waivers, who we actually had and traded away. So, good for them, I guess. We don't need him, though. Game versus Tampa Bay. Wow, we've fallen all the... Well, okay, just by one point, but we've fallen all the way to fourth. <laughs> Tampa Bay is having a rough game go of it, though. They're 3-5-0 and oh, to start the year. We'll leave Hellebuck in net, send the game out, and we lose again. 2 nothing. Come on! Vasileski gets hot. Well, you've completely destroyed our hot streak now. Huh? Okay, right. I forget. I'm like, wait, how did Trocek get on Tampa Bay? Oh, right. We traded him there. He scores the yeah, good winner. That's... Oh, nice. So. Uh... Gudu Creator says Vatnin isn't doing too well play, either. Play he needs to get in shape. They put him on Stamkos' wing. They put Trocek on Stamkos' wing, so now watch him have a monster year and Radish does nothing for us. Radish is playing fourth line minutes, but we just needed a guy to come in with a lower salary cap who has high hopes. Okay, well, you explain that to the fans when Trocek gets 60 points this year. Well, you know what? He was playing... F- on the second line and only got 30 points. What do you want from me? <laughs> Better trading, obviously. 
our guys are all pretty good. All right, game versus San Jose here. We are going to switch and put Thatcher Demko in net. See if he can lead us to a victory here. And he does. He gets hot. We win 5 0. Thatcher Demko is our number one star, making okay. 32 saves. Tippett gets three assists. Barkov gets three assists. Ekblad, Matthews, Huberdo, Butcher, and Ekblad again score for us. That's how you win a game. I know we're a little bit over time here, but let's just try and push this to the end of the month and see how we do and see how our owner feels at the end of the month. Yep. We started a little late too, I think. Yeah. So game versus Washington. And I guess we'll leave Hellebuck in net for this. Hopefully he can get this win. And he does. But he we heat up the other goalie still because we pepper him with 38 shots. Hellebuck takes 36, but lets two goals in. Tippett scores, Butcher scores, Bean scores. Shorthanded. Nice. And Huberto scores for the loss for the win. 7-2-1 for 15 points. Great. This, this is by far the best start we've ever had with the Florida Panthers. Yeah. So that's Which awesome. isn't that impressive because we've had some pretty bad starts. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, it's been a long, slow grind for those people watching us here on our Twitch page which is twitch.tv slash OOTP developments, and those watching us on through the YouTube videos, which is youtube.com slash OOTP developments. And so, I mean, it's been tough to watch as we've been struggling. Blackhawks trade anti Ranta to Houston. Houston's actually got a winning record this year, so go Houston. Well, it's early. <laughs> I'm still going to cheer for them. They've had a rough go of a start of their expansion. Sim it out, and we lose to Vegas. Marc-Andre Fleury beats us 2-1. Overtime loss. Carlson gets his first goal of the year. And we actually went to the shootout. Patrice Bergeron, who's playing with Vegas, gets the only goal of the shootout. So that's disappointing. And we are tied for first. Danny DeKaiser's on waivers, but he is too old for us. Game versus Columbus. We will put Demko in net. Sim it out. And Demko wins again. 38 shots on net, makes 36 saves. We win 3-2 in a shootout. Nobody scored first period. Borkstrand scores. Dolins gets his first goal of the year. Awesome. And the shootout went for quite a while. Jordan Eberle finally buries it on, on the 12th shooter. Wow. <laughs> So, yeah, that's punching back and forth. Austin Matthews continues to prove on left wing, which is great. 15 points through 12 games. Yes, we know someone pretty good is on waivers, but we don't want them. Some scouting reports. Eight, two, and two. Again, great record. I should actually check and see how the minor league team's doing as well. Because I kind of forget about them. Great night for Alex Turcott. So our draft pick, who we had on our team and we sent down to Saginaw, in a 10-0 win over Flint, he had three goals and four assists, playing almost half the game, 27 minutes and 14 seconds of ice time. He's got 23 points in 12 games. Nice. Game versus Colorado here. 
Summon out, and we win again. Overtime win 6-5. Matthew scores. Matthew scores again. Carlson scores. Carlson scores. Vidari scores. And Adam Marchation scores in overtime. All right. He is proving well worth the bringing him up to the NHL team. Sorry, you cut in and out on there. It's like it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't putting up huge numbers, but again, seeing what he had done and is doing in our Seattle game, I had faith he might come around. So we'll put Demko in net for this one versus the Islanders. Sim it out, and we win again. 4 3, beating Eamon McAdam pretty sweet name scoring four goals in the first period and then desperately hanging on Matthews Barkov Suzuki Eberly. again for the most part we haven't really had the same goal scores it's kind of been everybody man Taylor Radish only has one assist so far that's a little disappointing no, you've been playing him, on, playing him on the fourth line, though, so yeah, not that surprising. 8.34 or a night. We'll maybe try and bump their minutes up a little bit. Coming up. Uh, again, I'll probably sim this up a little bit just to kind of keep us moving. I'll maybe send it, sim it up to January, as long as things don't go crazy. Yeah, just get it uh, close to the trade deadline so we can decide what we want to do there. Yeah. Oh, but you've got the you, you do have the World Junior Championship with the uh, Finnish team that you no, may want to. That's right. Do it a show too. So, so maybe we'll maybe just take it to Christmas I'll, time. I'll, yeah, I'll sum it up till then. And so we can see a trade. Oh, Tevu Teravainen has been traded to Colorado for the rights to a couple guys, and we are through October now. And we went 10, 2, and 2 for 22 points on the year, which means we're basically about halfway to our first point total for the first year, I think. I think we only ended up with. <laughs> yeah. It was historically bad. And then we got this game. Ended up with 96 last year. So, I mean, again, when you only have two regulation losses, can you really complain? So not so far, no. John Tavares, who's playing with Toronto, was the number one, or sorry, the player of the month, and Mike Condon was the goaltender of the month. That's disappointing. Development report: Everybody's going up. Aaron Ekblad is at four stars now. I think that might have just happened. I think he was sitting at three and a half for a while, wasn't he? I? Hmm, I don't know. Suzuki. Brett Kemp only has two goals in 13 games. That's disappointing, Mr. Kemp. Step it up. Yeah, I may yet pick it up. Nando Eggenberger's got eight points through 13 games. That's good. And seeing some other guys get some playing time. We'll just take a quick look and see how... Uh, All right, so our AHL team. Springfield. A couple guys hurt. That's not good. Ooh, some guys severely hurt. All right, so standing Springfield is... Currently sitting 4, 7, and 2. Bad start to the year for them. Can't really give them any help more than what they already have. But they'll come along. They have some good goaltending. Just need it to step it up a little bit. Game versus Anaheim here. No. Uh, play Hellebuck, sim it out, and we win. And we made their goalie cold. All right, 5 2 win. Borkstrand, Barkov, Huberdo, Kershev, Eberly score in the win and lots of penalties Borkstrand has now converted to center alright good excellent
And board confidence update. We are sitting in first place. 24 points. Is our owner going to be happy? Bet yes or no, Jeff. Uh, should be happy. Owner says, Vinny Viola thinks the season is in a great success so far and the team is in outstanding shape. The performance in the last few weeks has confirmed this impression. Your record last month is 11-2-2. Two two. For a long-term perspective, Vinny Vi Vincent Viola is happy with your work as general manager of the Panthers and look forward to a successful future. Huzzah! All right. Uh, I think this is where we'll wrap it up here, then, as I'm just simming out the next game and kind of continuing to move on here. So, oh, we lost very ugly there. Seven to three loss. That's rough. All right, but... Thank you very much for tuning in to another Franchise Hockey Manager 4 stream. We stream every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash OOTP developments, although we occasionally do streams at other times. To know when we do them, you should be following us on Twitter, at Franchise Hockey, or join our Discord, where you will get alerts. And our Discord ch uh, channel link can be found on our Twitter page. You can also follow us on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash franchise hockey manager. You can also reach out to us on our official website, which is ootpdevelopments.com. Click on the community button in the top right hand corner, which will take you to our official forums where you can talk about out of the park baseball, franchise hockey manager, MLB manager, or just about anything else you want to. And if you're watching this video and you're going, man, this series is really good, I wonder what else these guys are doing head on down to our official YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash Developments, where we archive all of our live streams. Jeff, did I miss anything? No, I don't think anything. I think so. All right. So, thank you very much for tuning in, and we will see you all again next week.